experience to travel to Asia during the coronavirus, especially with layovers in Hong Kong. Before my trip, I was cracking jokes on here about Budweiser bacteria, but honestly, by the end, I was wearing a mask for my 14-hour flight and praying that I wouldn't be quarantined. Now, on a lighter note, it's trivia time, and we're almost at the end of season 14, so you probably know how to play. Just in case, I'm going to ask you 21 questions. You're going to tap the correct answer, and if you get them all right, you get money. There are prize opportunities at Q6, Q11, and Q18, so you can always stop there and claim your winnings. But if you keep going and you get them all right, we have a jackpot of $1,000. Tonight's game has a hidden theme, so if you guess that, the question should get easier for you. Share it in the chat to help others, or you know, keep that information to yourself. Be selfish. Uh, we have some fun games coming up as well later this week. Wednesday is a jackpot game. So if you like things bigger, and really who doesn't, we have a bigger jackpot and bigger prizes every Wednesday. Thursday is the season 14 finale and the last day to take advantage of your levels before they reset. We will also be shouting out top performing players. Where are my teacher's pets at? No shade here, my superlative in the yearbook was biggest teacher's pet. True story. Friday, we have another game of HQ Tunes. This week, it'll be music trivia all about Destiny's Child. So if you want to win and pay those bills, 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 come play with us. Saturday is the day you can buy super cheap Valentine's Day candy. Oh, and also Smarter Day, of course. It'll be post-Valentine's Day science trivia, the science of attraction. Yes. Siri, what's on my calendar for Sunday? Sunday is Austin Powers Day. Yeah, baby. Doctor. Oh, behave. And finally, I want to remind you to play HQX Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern. Hit the subscribe button to get notified when we go live. All you need is the camera on your phone to play and win. We now have cash prizes and coin rewards up for grabs. The Oscars were last night. Congratulations to Parasite for making history. Now, on a less significant note, but still a very fun one, there's always lots of debate over whether celebrities' outfits are hits or misses. So let's recap some of the most debated looks from last night. We're not shaming anyone. Everyone looked glamorous AF. So which of these Little Women nominee styles is your favorite? Laura Dern. Sir Ronan or Timothy Chalamet. Which one? Just a little warm up for your fingers. No answer is wrong. I mean, they all looked gorgeous to me. I don't think I could choose, but Chalamet's threads were pretty sick. Are you allowed to choose a guy over the, over the girls who pick out their dresses? Okay, Laura Dern. Yeah, I'm, I've been rooting for Laura Dern in everything lately. I'm a big fan. Now. What about the most awkward moments from the Oscars last night? Which of these made you go, huh? Or Snap back to reality. Oh, the ghost gravity. Oh, the ghost gravity. Choke. He's so mad that he won't. We feel entitled to artificially inseminate a cow. And when she gives birth, we steal her baby. Baby. So you might have to let me know in the chat, but let's try to get this vote in. Which one was the most awkward? Hurry, tell me, hurry, nope. Okay, chat it is, let's count it down, baby. Joaquin Phoenix, and yeah, he's had some pretty um, memorable acceptance speeches lately. But let's get quizzical. Q1. What kind of book was commonly kept? Normal romance. Many of these books have survived, which is pretty good for paper surviving hundreds of years. If a prayer book and a children's book with colorful drawings had a baby, you'd get a book of hours. Book of hours is your answer. 63,532 of you got that. Middle-aged women, on the other hand, commonly keep Fifty Shades of Grey and Danielle Steele novels. 
Q2, which sensation has similar symptoms to angina? Heartburn, common cold, or stubbed toe? Don't web and these symptoms unless you wanna think you're dying. The main symptom of angina is pain in your chest, which anyone over 30 would also identify as heartburn. Yeah, heartburn is your answer. 65,171 of you knew that. Yeah, if you have chest pain, don't panic. The odds that it's angina are very, very low, and the odds that you should eat less spicy foods are very, very high. Which clothing type does not have a specific shape? Evening gown, sheath dress, or mermaid gown? We've all been there. You got a fancy party to go to? Nothing to wear, you're sitting on your bed in your towel, your boyfriend's yelling at you? Well, reach for your closest evening gown. Any shape will do, because they can be any shape, yeah. 32,970 of you got that, but we have a savage question super early on. Wow, savagery over gowns. Were you not watching the Oscars last night? I guess we don't say which kind of dress is which, but a sheath is a fitted dress with a nipped waist seam. We're talking about nipped waist, people. Not what you're thinking. And a mermaid gown fishtails out in a flare at the bottom. Yeah. Well, you can have some flair when you're bottoming too. Like in that last question with extra lives, because if you didn't get it, you can use up to three in a game all the way up to Q17. Buy one now or throughout the game by tapping that heart icon on the bottom right side of your screen. By definition, a composite number must not be what? Even negative or prime. This one goes out to all my algebras. When you multiply a positive integer greater than one by another positive integer greater than one, you get a composite number, which means it's impossible for it to be prime. Yes, 47,231 of you got that. I can relate, being 33, I'm out of my prime for the next three years, because 37 is my next prime number, get it? Throughout almost the entire show, which Seinfeld character lives in the same building as Jerry? Kramer, George, or Lane? We are well overdue for another Seinfeld theme game, don't you think? Based off Larry David's real across the hall neighbor, Kenny Kramer, fictional Cosmo Kramer lived just steps away from Jerry. Kramer, is it? Yes, 59,765 of you got that. Junior Mint, anyone? Maybe a salad I made in the shower? Giddy up, we got a prize question coming up. Let's do this. The Arrested Development character, Mrs. Featherbottom, is a parody of what character? Mrs. Doubtfire, Mrs. Miniver, or Mrs. Dalloway? Parody of what character? When Tobias Funke disguises himself as an elderly British housekeeper to spend more time with his children, he's directly ripping off Mrs. Doubtfire with a little Mary Poppins mixed in. Yeah, 47,779 of you got that. Now, David Cross is no Robin Williams, but he does make a valiant effort. It's a funny scene. It's funny several scenes. All right, guys, we are offering 112 coins to 47,779 players. There's five questions until the next prize. What are you going to do? You gonna take the coins? Or are you gonna keep playing till maybe the end? Are you gonna go for it? All right, let's find out. We have 18,811 players choosing the coins, 112 points each of you, and we have 40,993 of you still playing. Let's go, five questions till the next prize. What matter is thought to make up most of the mass in the universe? Dark matter, observable matter, antimatter. What's the matter with you? Probably made up of ordinary matter, but most of the galaxy is a little darker. Scientists estimate about 85% is dark matter. Yeah, dark matter. 27,585 of you got that. Why does it matter? Because if you know, you're one step closer to the prize. What level are you on? 10? If not, now is the time to grab a points multiplier. Points get you to new levels, and levels give you free passes on questions. You know, we got that season finale coming up, so help yourselves out in any way that you can. Back to quizzing, Q8. Which musical competed for Tonys with the original run of The Phantom of the Opera? The Miserable, La Cage Paul, or Into the Woods? Ah, oh, the 
Tonys. As James Corden said, the Super Bowl for people who don't know what the Super Bowl is. In 1998, which was absolutely dominated by Phantom's seven Tonys, the Sondheim musical Into the Woods managed to pick up a few. Into the Woods is your answer, and I suspected this. It is a super savage question. 6,569 of you got that, but we have 26,000 of you out on that. The good news is you're not past the point of no return. You can grab an extra life, get back in the game. Q9, which process helps organisms better fit their environment? Adaptation, apoptosis, or infiltration? Well, when horses develop teeth better able to nosh grass, or polar bears develop white fur to camouflage with snow, that's part of the process of adaptation. Yes, adaptation. 19,149 of you got that. Or humans developing skull horns in the back of their neck because of their smartphone addiction. It's a real thing. Look it up if you don't believe me. Which Game of Thrones actress played a character from the North? Lena Headey, Amelia Clark? For Sophie Turner. Dun, 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 dun. The North remembers. And if you said Sophie Turner, so do of you got that. Coincidentally, she's married to one of the Jonas brothers, and I would say that's a step up from Joffrey. All right. Prize question coming up. What did Elon Musk call far more dangerous than nukes? Alien life, artificial intelligence, or poor education? Fourteen thousand seven hundred two of you got that. Or maybe he's just trying to scare the government and us into using SpaceX and his Teslas. Real sneaky, Elon. All right, it's a prize question. We are offering 412 coins to 14,702 players. There are seven questions until the next prize. Are you gonna go for it? Or are you gonna take the coins? Take it or leave it? Risky, short thing. 9,601 of you chose to take the 412 coins. We have 6,192 of you still playing. Seven questions until the next prize. Have you guessed the theme yet? All right. Which part of a basketball court is closest to the free throw line? Ooh, 10 second line, block or high post? Any Rockets fans know because they see James Harden posted up at the free throw line 30 times a game. This spot used to be very important in the NBA. Now it's kind of no man's land. You don't want to get stuck with mid-range jumpers in the high post. High post is your answer. 3,194 of you got that. Dunks or threes, baby. That's all we need these days. Q13. The actor known as the Singing Cowboy founded what MLB team? Yankees, Angels, or Dodgers? Spring training right around the corner. This question is a bit apropos. If you've heard Back in the Saddle again, you've heard Gene Autry, actor, singer, and LA Angels founder. Angels is your answer. 3,878 of you got that. Not calling them the Cowboys must have been a great act of restraint, right? Q14. A standard set of golf clubs typically has the most of what kind of club? Putters, irons, or woods? A golfer can customize his or her set of clubs, but a traditional set has two to three woods, one putter, and up to seven different irons. Irons is your answer. 3,966 of you knew that. Their shirts must be so crisp. But they always pack a spare set of trousers in case they get a hole in one. And no one had better trousers than Payne Stewart. Which song's lyrics reference slang from A Clockwork Orange? Lust for Life, Radio Gaga, or Suffragette City? Fictional language from Anthony Burgess's novel infiltrated the 60s and the 70s after Stanley Kubrick's film. 
Among the influenced, David Bowie, who used droogs in Suffragette City. Yes, 2,416 of you got that. Me and my droogs are heading over to the milk bar for a little maloco after the game, if you want to join and celebrate. What phrase originated in a poem by Alexander Pope? Dust to dust, no man is an island or hope springs eternal. Before social media was originating trending phrases, people had to get their idioms from poetry. Alexander Pope was responsible for hope springs eternal in his essay on man. 1,854 1, of you got that. Hashtag hope, hashtag blessed, hashtag sorry not sorry. Sorry. The man who oversaw the construction of the Pentagon also directed what Operation Desert Storm, Operation Overlord, or the Manhattan Project? <laughs> Sounds like this guy had a lot on his plate. Lieutenant General Leslie Groves has left his mark on American history. As part of the Army Corps of Engineers, he was in charge of the Pentagon construction and leading the Manhattan Project. 2,516 of you got that. Well. It seems like that question didn't blow up in your face, and that's great because we have a prize question. Up next, which book was written by an author from a country with only two colors in its flag? Out of Africa, Death in Venice, or My Brilliant Friend? This one goes out to all of my literary flag nerds. Is that a thing? If not, now it is. The correct answer is Out of Africa. 1,318 of you got it. Though she wrote out of Africa about her time in Kenya, Isik Dinesen, AKA Baroness Karen Ligson, was a citizen of Denmark who published her novels under various pseudonyms. All right, if you got through all of that, we are now offering 1,000 coins to 1,318 of you. There are three questions until the next prize, which is the grand prize. I say go for it. But hey, don't listen to me. <laughs> you can also take your thousand coins. Coins, we got 942 left in the game. Three questions left. Which film had a higher worldwide gross than Iron Man, Thor, Trolls, or Mamma Mia? Eating out the Elon Musk of superheroes is no easy feat. But all the lightning bolts and billionaire playboy philanthropists in the world can't catch Meryl singing ABBA covers on a Greek island. So yeah, Mamma Mia. Mamma Mia, 711 of you got that. Mamma Mia beat Iron Man in the box office even if it didn't sell as many action figures. Have you guessed the theme? Hint, hint. Which Avril Lavigne single charted highest on the Billboard Hot 100? I'm with you, skater boy, or complicated. Nothing says teenage angst like Canada's pop punk princess. And if you guess skater boy, you must be so frustrated. <laughs> Cause it's complicated. It's complicated, 585 if you got that. My feelings for her are also complicated. Kind of like her relationship with Nickelback frontman, Chad Kroger. Yes, the two corniest Canadians were once a couple. Guess that makes me corny. Um, Cause I like both. Cringe now or forever hold your peace. But you're probably not cringing. You're probably celebrating because you made it to the final question. You made it through 20 questions. I think we've determined what the theme is and hopefully that helps you in this final one, because maybe you're an expert. Which Big Little Lies actress has the same birth name as her character in the series, Nicole Kidman, Meryl Streep, or Reese Witherspoon? One more congratulations to Laura Dern on her Oscar win last night. Great in Marriage Story, great in Big Little Lies. All right, is it easy to get into character if your name is Mary Louise and your character's name is Mary Louise? Meryl was born Mary Louise and was also the theme of this puzzle and the answer to this. Yes, 514 of you got that. We have winners. Yeah, baby. 514 winners. See, Skiria, 
you have $1.94. Bing cow. Buy something. Morpheus, congratulations on your $1.94. Prosecution something maybe? I'm just guessing. And Cerise, upset dog, you're definitely happy now. And your picture's of a cat, so um, it's actually quite the opposite. Uh, Dana Tara, congratulations to you. Everybody, congratulations on your win. You made it through 21 questions, all relating to Meryl Streep somehow. Anytime we do a 21 question game, I have to congratulate all of us for making it through, myself included, because that's a lot of questions. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Find out what my bottom half looks like by following me on social media. Um, the same across all the platforms, and I'll be posting some Thailand photos too, because did you even go on vacation if you don't post about it? Have a great night, everyone. Bye.